Uncle Jeff, have you seen the last piece of pumpkin pie? Mm. What did it look like? Come on, you're like 50 years old. You should know how pie looks. Jeff, 50? Oh, come on. Can you even count to 50? Uncle Jeff, I got some questions for you. Yes? Why do we have turkey on Thanksgiving? Because when cooked properly, every four or five years, it's delicious. Okay, so then why would we have green bean casserole then? Touche. Why can't I just have a whipped cream? But that's the pie. Ah, uh, clearly it's not stopping you. Why did mom have a full plate of stuffing when she's on keto? Because carbs are comforting. Why can't I just lick my plate? If I'm in charge of the dishes, I actually encourage that. Why are there no unicorns in the Bible? Why am I not allowed to sit close to the TV? Why does water taste different in Nana's house? Why isn't Grandpa allowed to have salt? Why is gravy brown? Why am I not allowed to touch the air freshener? Why does Cooper pick his nose so much? Why does Mom call me by my sister's name? Why do we plant all the time? Why can't I eat grass? Why can't I sit in Dad's chair? Why is Sunday school called Sunday school? Why do cows have four stomachs? Why do parents whisper when they get mad? Why do old people write in cursive? Why do babies have no teeth? Why is baseball so boring? Why do fish have no lungs? Why is Thanksgiving before Christmas? I know why. You know why what? I know why Thanksgiving comes right before Christmas. <sighs> okay. Tell me. Why does Thanksgiving come right before Christmas? Because it reminds us to be thankful that God sent us Jesus. <laughs> I never thought of that before. <laughs> I like that. All right, now. Hit me with some of that whipped cream, girl. <sighs> oh, that's good. I'm happy to have my face. I'm okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting game of Bigger Bible Books! The fun and exciting game where you, the audience, must quickly decide by looking at two books of the Bible which book you think is bigger. That is, which book has the most chapters. When you think you know the answer, shout out the name of the book and hold up one hand for book number one and two hands for book number two. Choose carefully, though. Select the correct book and you're still in the game. Select the wrong book and you can keep playing, but please take a seat. If you're still standing after all eight questions, you will have earned the title of Bigger Bible Books Champion. Everybody, on your feet. It's time to play Bigger Bible Books. Which book is bigger, Psalms or Jude? Time's up. Psalms is the bigger book with 150 chapters. Jude has only one. Now, which book is bigger, Matthew or Joel? Time's up! Matthew is the bigger book with 28 chapters. Joel has only three. Which of these books is bigger? First Samuel or First John? Time's up! First Samuel is bigger because it has 31 chapters. First John has only five. Nice job if you got all three of those right. Now, which of these books is bigger? Obadiah or Genesis? Time's up! Genesis is the bigger book with 50 chapters. Obadiah has only one. Which of these books do you think is bigger? Ruth or Proverbs? Time's up! Proverbs is bigger because it has 31 chapters. 
Ruth has only four. Excellent work if you're still standing. You really know your books of the Bible. Now, which of these books is bigger? Acts or Third John? Time's up! Acts is the bigger book with 28 chapters. Third John has only one. These last two questions are going to get a little tougher now. Which of these books is bigger? Luke or Esther? Time's up! Luke is the bigger book with 24 chapters. Esther has only 10. Final question! Which of these two books do you think is bigger? 2 Samuel or Job? Time's up! Job is bigger because it has 42 chapters. 2 Samuel has only 24. Congratulations! If you got all eight questions right, that is very impressive. You have earned the title of Bigger Bible Books Champion! Thanks for playing, everyone! Feel the wonder, say his name, watch the darkness slip away. Put your power on display Say goodbye to fear and shame
so alive with you You're making all things brand new So crazy to believe that Nothing's ever gonna come between All the love that you have for me It's a new day Canaanland Kids for Christ, welcome back. I'm so happy to be here with you this week. Can you imagine Thanksgiving is Thursday? If you notice, I have on my fall colors. And I'm sure when you look outside of your window, you see the leaves have fallen, the flowers are probably dead by now, and some of you have probably even had your first snowball fight. Imagine that. But this jacket was just so you could see the fall colors. I am so glad to be with you. I, I've already said that, but I am very glad to be with you. This week, I want to talk to you about Thanksgiving because it's such an important time of the year. So let's talk about it. Now, Thanksgiving began as a day of giving thanks and sacrifice for those blessings of harvest and the preceding year. Now, if we want something from, or if we need something, we can get in our car and drive to the grocery store. But when Thanksgiving originally began to be celebrated, there was no such thing as going to the grocery store. When you had your groceries, that's because you sowed a seed and you harvested. So they gave thanks for the harvest that came in. They were able to eat because they sowed seed and the harvest came in. They were able to eat because they had turkeys and cows and pigs, and they were able to harvest from those animals and eat. And some of them were so creative, they were able to save food even for the next year. They were able to put food up and conserve for the next year. Now, Thanksgiving in the Bible means to respond to God's goodness and grace with gratitude. The word thanks in the Old Testament meant to raise your hands in gratitude. The title of our lesson this week is Have a Thankful Heart. A thankful heart, hmm. In 1789, President George Washington proclaimed Thanksgiving as a national holiday. He recognized the fact that we that people should take time out to say thank you to God for all of his provisions that he's given. Now that's one day a week, or that's one day a year. But you know what? We should have a thankful heart every day, all day, not just once a year. We should always thank God for his provisions and for the things that he's given us. He woke us up this morning. A lot of us woke up in a warm house. They were able, we were able to get up and have breakfast. We had our family around us. We have so many things to be thankful for. We have our family around us, our brothers and sisters, and sometimes they might bother us. We might wish that they go on vacation sometimes away from us, but they're there and we can be thankful for them. Did you know that they thought of making a turkey as our national bird? Isn't that funny? Do you know what our national bird is? I'm not going to tell you, but I am going to allow you the chance to look it up so you will know what our national bird is. And before we go further into our lesson, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity of being able to come before your children, Father God. I thank you that their hearts and minds are open to receive your word, Father God. Lord, just use me as the instrument, Father God, that they hear your word because your word says one man planteth, another man watereth, but you give the increase, Father. So we thank you and I thank you for the increase of knowledge, revelation, and understanding that's coming forth right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, some of you might want to take notes. So if you don't have your pens and paper, why don't you go get your pens and paper and 
be ready to take some notes because there are some very interesting things. I'm going to give you about five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. I hope you have your pen and paper ready. We're going to start with our memory verse. Our memory verse is found in Psalms 107 verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. So his love goes on and on and on and on. Now let's look at our next slide. There are two words in here I want to talk about. The first word is thanks. It means to be grateful, to have gratitude, and I add it to acknowledge a person or a kindness. A lot of times people won't say thank you because they think they've done it all of themselves and they don't need help or they don't need to thank anyone. You know, you, people might say, oh, well, I pulled myself up by my own bootstrings. That's not true. Someone along the way helped them to achieve what they achieved, regardless to whether they know it or not. They had a helping hand. Our second word is endures. That means long suffering without stop and never giving up. Let's look at our next slide. When I hear the word endures, I think of the ever ready battery. It keeps, and it's in the ever ready battery, it's like God's love. It keeps giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. It never stops, it never runs out, and it never gets tired, regardless to what we may do. It's constantly giving. I want to share the story of the 10 lepers with you today. Keep in mind, leprosy in those days could happen to anyone. It didn't matter if you were a man, a woman, old or young, rich, poor, Jew or Gentile. That disease did not discriminate. Everyone could be, anyone could become a victim. Leprosy was such a terrible disease People were rarely cured from it. It caused open sores and those with it would smell bad because their skin would oftentimes become infected and it was a very painful disease. If you had leprosy, you were forced to yell, unclean, unclean, and that would prevent other people from getting close to you and possibly becoming infected. Those who came down with the disease of leprosy could no longer live with their families. They were forced to live outside of the city to prevent others from catching this disease. They had to go. People were afraid. I want us to remember they could not have a job or support themselves. They had no one to comfort them except other lepers. They could not touch or hold the hands of their loved ones. They were removed from everything and everyone they loved. Let's look at this quick movie clip. We're leaving tomorrow for Jerusalem, and we're going to look for someone too. Won't you come with us? The one that I am looking for is not in Jerusalem. The one we seek is not in Jerusalem either. But we know he will be. But well, we've heard that he's going to be there for the Passover. Perhaps your man will be there too. I am sure he will be. But I can never go to Jerusalem. Why not? Everyone goes there at some time or another. Samaritans do not. Oh. So you're a Samaritan, eh? I am. Well, you're also a leper. And we are lepers, too. And we would be cured of our leprosy. Wouldn't you? That's why I am here. To find the one who has the power to heal a leper. And that is why we're going to Jerusalem. For we, too, know of a man. And we've heard that he's going to be there. You mean Jesus of Nazareth? One who works miracles? You need not go to your holy city. Because... I heard he was soon pass along this road. Are you sure of this? 
as sure as I am that he can cure us of this leprosy. Then we will stay here and watch for him. Yes. So the lepers watched day and night for the man they hoped would heal them of their leprosy. After some time, one of them saw Jesus coming down the road with his disciples. recognize some of his followers. Look, look, there's Simon, whom he calls Peter, and his brother Andrew. Do you think he'll help us? I am sure he will. Lord, help us. He healed the leper at Capernaum. He will heal us. Master! Master, have mercy! Help us! Help us! Help us! Help us! Master! Go and show yourselves to the priests. At Jesus' words, the ten lepers instantly felt the divine authority in the master's voice. Without a doubt, they realized the promise that was in his word, and they went off to do as he had commanded them. But then... Look! Clean. I'm clean too. I'm clean. My stores are gone. I'm clean. Come. Let us show ourselves to the priest. not ten lepers cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this stranger? Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Once again, Jesus had demonstrated his love and compassion for all men. Once more, he had ignored the tradition and customs of his day to give the living proof of his divine authority and the love of God. Did you notice that they all wanted healing from Jesus? They cried out to Jesus for mercy. They all wanted and needed something from Jesus. All 10 needed and wanted something from Jesus. Do you remember what happened when the 10 lepers obeyed Jesus' instruction? If you said they were cleansed, then you're right. They followed Jesus' instructions, his directions, and they were cleansed from leprosy. Do you remember who Jesus told them to go and show themselves to? 
think hard. If you said they had to show themselves to the priest, then yes, you're right again. I hope you notice the same thing that I noticed. When all of them realized that they were clean and they were rushing to go show themselves to the priest, one stopped. He looked at his hands and he realized, I'm clean. Hold on, before I show myself to the priest, I need to go thank the man who healed me. He needed to go thank Jesus. He stopped, turned around, and went back to say thank you. He realized that without Jesus' mercy, he would still have leprosy. He would still have to live in that leper's colony. He would not be able to go home. He would not be able to be with his family. His life had a new beginning at the time he was healed from leprosy. Jesus loved all of them so much that he showed them that grace and that mercy. Do you know, they knew of Jesus, but they didn't say that they were followers of Jesus. So even now, God's grace and mercy will fall on the saved and the unsaved. But because we have asked Jesus to be in our hearts, we have even more grace and mercy. He blesses us over and over again, time and time again. I want us to remember that it is so important for us to daily give thanks to God. When we're reading our word, we learn of the grace and mercy and promises that he has given us. God has promised us so many things and it's in his word. And if you're reading the word daily, you will learn of his grace, his mercy, his blessings and his promises. We should be so excited because he's given us all. God gave his own son to die on the cross for our sins so that we could walk in the grace and mercy. We could walk in the goodness of God. We could be available and open to his blessings. And we can hear him just as they physically heard Jesus saying, go show yourselves to the priest. We can hear him just as clearly when we read the word of God. I don't know if all of you or if some of you have not asked Jesus to live in your heart, but if you have not, I would like to take this opportunity to pray the prayer of salvation with you. So if you'd like to do that, please bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your son, Jesus. And I thank you for this opportunity for me to make Jesus the head of my life. Father God, I repent of all the sins that I have done, those that I knew about and those that I did not know about. And I ask Jesus to come into my heart and live his life through me. From this day forward, I accept and I acknowledge you as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, guess what? You are now part of the family of God. I am so excited. All of heaven is rejoicing because you made that one decision to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior to accept the, the promises that he's given you. I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor. Before the day is over with, this Thanksgiving day that's coming up, before that day is over with, and even before today is over with, let's think of some things that we can be thankful for. And when you're sitting down at that Thanksgiving table, maybe having your turkey, your dressing, your mashed potatoes, your cranberry sauce, your beans, your corn, your sweet potatoes, your, your, your pecan pies, your caramel cake, your, your German chocolate cake, your uh, pineapple cake, whatever you might be having. Take time to thank Jesus and maybe ask other people at the table, what are you thankful for today? I'm so glad I had this time with you. And guess what? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ask others what they're thankful for. 
And before we leave, I want us to go over our memory verse one more time. So repeat after me. It's found in Psalms 107, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. I'm looking forward to spending time and seeing you again. So, goodbye for now. Super.